Okay, so let's continue. Let's build our our square phantom. Maybe let's put a couple of more rectangles in, and maybe even this could be something. Um, I think we could make something which is not really just multiples of two or something like this, so it will a little bit go between uh, between pixels, so it's not perfectly aligned with, with pixels. That will help in avoiding inverse crimes. Uh, let's put something like this is 1 over pi and uh, and second maybe let's make something longer and this would be in two and maybe let's even have here a little bit different attenuation let's see how this looks like So now we have another one, and maybe let's have like one more and, and see. Mm. And how should we do this one? Hmm. Let's see how this looks like. Hmm. What do you think? Should we change it or add something more? Or yes, yes, good, much better. Let's do the third one horizontally. Uh, yes, yes. Mm. Uh, maybe like this. Hmm. Okay, let's let's try with this one. That'll work. Okay, cool. We can always change it later if we want. So that's our phantom, and then we should uh, take a look at different uh, data collections. So uh, let's first just take a look at Radon and Iradon. Mm. Let's test various uh, tomographic or oh, let's just put it like this. So then let, we need to use radon uh, or let's say let's choose uh, our projection directions and mm, maybe let's start with something something like uh, 0 to 179 with a step step of 1 degree so half a circle and let's evaluate our phantom so we need uh, our phantom and then uh, use radon.m uh, to create uh, a sinogram. So, <clears throat> sinogram equals 
radon of our image and with these angles we chose and then let's take a look how it looks like let's have a three picture with uh, three sub pictures the phantom the sinogram and the reconstruction because now in the testing let's just use iradon for the reconstruction just to get an idea how it looks like mm, so So in our first plot, let's just show the phantom. Actually, we can we can take it. Let's steal it from here. Okay, and this would be Tomo data test, for example. And let's do a second. And here let's show the sinogram. And these, I think, let's just comment. And see what happens. Okay, so there is our phantom, then uh, there's the sinogram, maybe, just maybe it would look better to have the sinogram in its own, own picture actually. Uh, so let's have here only the let's have only the phantom and reconstruction in that picture well, reconstruction we don't have yet, but anyway. Sinogram in its own figure. Mm, maybe we could... Maybe we could here do it like here. Size uh, sinogram the number of columns and here the number of rows mm. maybe we need to round okay let's see how this looks like well it's a bit clearer so we have 180 angles as we chose the number to be 180 uh, projection directions there seem to be 49 um, x-rays in each projection and that's the thing we discussed last time Matlab Radon uses its own internal logic to decide how many rays it wants. In this case, it wants 49. It is possible, of course, to track down where this number comes from, but we will not do that. There we see our sinogram. Also, if we want, we can do this uh, with a bit more accuracy. So now we have much more x-rays because our pixel image is bigger. So now we can see rather clearly the sinogram. We see there are three objects. Already from the sinogram we can see in this case pretty clearly that there are three objects each uh, drawing a kind of a sinusoidal uh, uh, picture into the sinogram. So that's our data. But in our computational model uh, m equals af this will be a vector m where we just drop the columns in a, in a long vertical vector. But this is maybe a good way to look at the sinogram anyway. Okay, the reconstruction is missing, so let's just use MATLAB's iradon mm. 
Iridon is based on the so-called filtered back projection formula, which is the classical X-ray uh, reconstruction method. We will not look so much into it in this course because we want to deal with the same matrix model covering many inverse problems. The filtered back projection is, is really built for the X-ray application in mind, and actually it even uh, assumes that there is a lot of projection directions, so very small angular steps when collecting the data. So another reason of not focusing on filtered back projection is that we are interested in sparse data sets. And then filtered back projection is really not at its best. Uh, not really. It filtered back projection. You can just you can just uh, start using it. How noise appears? Of course, if data is more noisy, the reconstruction is more noisy. But then you can uh, then you can adjust the filter in the so called it's filtered back projection anyway. So in the filter, you can modify it so that it it uh, does not enhance high frequencies so much. So that's a way to reduce the noise. Yeah. And that process is really well understood by now, uh, and I would even recommend the classical book by Frank Natterer, the Grand Master of Filtered Back Projection. There, it's really all you need to know about it. And also his later book with Frank Wibbeling as well. That's a great one as well. Okay, uh, reconstruction. We apply Iradon to the sinogram and our angles. Now I must say I'm not completely sure if I remember the the uh, syntax correctly, so let's see here, help Iradon. Mm. Okay, it seems to be okay. So also we want to So here we'll show the reconstruction. Okay, you see it's a, a very nice reconstruction. The values look okay, and although well, we're not sure if it, if this is on the same color map, but it's it's we have so many angles that filtered back projection is doing its job very nicely. We have lots of x-rays, lots of directions. Uh, now, of course, if we, for example, if we take much bigger angular steps in our data, what happens is we have a more narrow sinogram, much less angles, and then the reconstruction suddenly is maybe not so good anymore. And now we also we have perfectly vertical rays and perfectly horizontal rays included into data. We also we could do something like uh, whatever something like this. So no, it's still quite. <clears throat> Hmm. Let's go from pi. Pi is always good. So now we don't have such perfectly aligned. So you see there starts to be some, some problems. The values don't look so good anymore and there are these kind of streak artifacts. And then also if we if you go back uh, to going with one degree uh, steps, but we have limited angle case, then uh, our reconstruction has trouble trouble uh, recovering all the all the uh, parts of the unknown. And now we only have in the sinogram we have only part of the sinogram, not not really spanning the full circle. And in, in practical situations, sometimes there are restrictions like these. And the tomographic problem takes many forms uh, based on what kind of 
collections there are. So for example, we will study something like having laid maybe something like 20 angles only. So let's say something like 1 to 20 and then times something like uh, nine. nine, maybe, yeah, that sounds pretty good. Let's see what happens. So we have reconstructions like that. Filtered back projection is nice in the sense that you always get some kind of picture when you feed in data. Often you can really see the main features from it. So it's really a, it, it's for a good reason, it's the standard algorithm uh, used in so many occasions. However, for sparse data cases, I think we can do better with the, with the regularization methods we learn in the course. Yes? Yes. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's see if we, for example, if we have, if we have one to ten and thirty to forty and, uh, well. Let's say 31, 61 to 70, and 91 to 100, something like this, for example. So our sinogram looks again rather, rather cubistic and as said, the filtered back projection will always return something and often we can see some useful information out of it. So it will serve as our kind of uh, baseline method to see if we can, if we can do better and uh, if we can see some different things compared to filtered back projection. But it's, as you see, it's, it's nice and easy to play around uh, with Radon and iRadon. Just create some data, apply iRadon. And there is even the possibility uh, to add some options here regarding the filter and some settings of the method. But now the idea would be to uh, construct our measurement matrix. And we did have, we did have uh, from previous lecture, I think we had this Radon matrix. So Mm, let's save this to our mm, okay so this should be let's say this is our first thing to do or compute some compute some matrices for us to use and let's save them into uh, a subfolder data. So we are building matrices and we want to choose the size of the unknown so let's go first with this 32 by 32 to keep everything uh, in, in, in tractable size. So this gives uh, the size of our unknown so what we just had capital M would be 2 to the power of J uh, in this case. Mm, maybe we can actually use it here. We could say M equals 2 to the power J and N equals M times M. So that would be our size of the unknown, because in the matrix A, in, in the computational model, the matrix A, it contains both uh, the size of the unknown and the size of the data, the K and N, they, they need to be specified by us. So now we have some angles for tomographic projections. 
so here we have a, a collection of those. Then we evaluate some Uh, then we build our matrix column by column. There's also uh, taking a look case, but I think we will just comment that. And then we save it. Uh, Because this is something really time-consuming to do, do this part. So let's compute uh, these matrices for a collection of different sizes and then uh, save them all in, in with uh, the file name containing the size information. So first of all, let's do this directory. If it's not there, let's make it. And then... Mm, Let's build a parameterized command for the save. So let's do it in this way. So we want to save to a file something like this, but now we want to keep the information of the size. So let's have here a uh, number to string uh, j. So this will specify the size of our phantom, the power of two we are using. And I think, let's see, how do we choose the angles? Now we are doing just the number of angles uh, in, the, in the rotation around the whole object. So the full uh, 360 turn and how many angles do we have? in that range. So let's let's keep this and let's use this number of angles as our... Obviously this does not now describe possible possible collections of angles like we just did with, with different densities of the angles and all that or limited angle or stuff like that. Let's not care. For now let's just use this number of angles that's a uniform uh, collection of angles over the full circle. So we have the size of the unknown recorded, then let's put in this n un. That's the name of the file and in the file what do we want to put? At least the matrix A and let's see Let's put n ang and angles. Let's put all of these j, m, n, just for easy further reference. So let's put here j, m, N is one. And the angles. No. So now I have this huge save command thing and then I evaluate it in MATLAB. So now let's just run this thing. Maybe let's run it with the smaller one so that we can... It doesn't take a long time and let's hear also... Let's monitor how the run is going. So what is our I, 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 uh, let's say,
Okay, let me run this. So now it already ran. Uh, why? Uh. Okay, and the directory, I'll just put it away. Okay, so it's pretty fast to compute, and we now have. In our data folder, we have our radon matrix with uh, j equals 4 and number of angles equals 13. So later we can just load this one and then that's our geometry, what we are using. So now if we want to do something else, for example, for example do the one we were thinking about, j equals 5 and this equals 33. Let's see how long this takes to run. There it was. Not too bad. And now we have here 32 by 32 uh, unknown and 33 angles. So this way we can, we can build up uh, a collection of matrices like that and then let's also compute the singular value composition so actually let's let's still remove these two things we computed and compute the singular value composition as well. So we have this u d v equals s v d of a and let's put here also display uh, computing s v d because that can take a long time. It's nice to know how long are we doing. So let's also clock it. Tick and then display uh, SPD. SVD computed in uh, in talk seconds. So we can have an idea how long we have to wait for these things. And then let's also save there the SVD. So U, D, V. Okay, so let's... Oh, S, V, D, S. Well, actually let's do this for full... Matrix A. 0 0.6 seconds, not too bad. And let's plot let's just plot the diagonal of S D. Oh, maybe we should use the semi-log logarithmic scale. So it seems we are dealing with some kind of an ill-posed matrix. The singular values are smoothly going to zero or becoming small, becoming small and also we can take a look at our matrix. Mm. So 
so it looks very much like like the thing we saw in the in the slice. Now we can zoom in a little bit to see that these are not really lines; these are points. If I zoom in, uh, you see these are really non-zero elements in the matrix. Okay, and then I think we can we can uh, do our first reconstruction still. So let's save this by the name. Let's say this one, and let's say this is um, first truncated SVD comp. I'm saying first because we are used, we, we are committing inverse crime here, so uh, that, that's why first. We will do a better one later. But let's save that and start by... Oh. Ah, sorry. Let's put here, uh, try truncated SVD for tomography. So then we choose again the size of the unknown with J. We choose the angle and then we actually just take in So now we we load ah, no sorry So now after this one we will have all of the all of these So now we can build our Phantom. So here we have this Tomodata test. So we can evaluate the Phantom, create a sinogram. We can do it with two types of Let's take everything here and go back to our SVD comp This would be recon one. And I think we have the angles. It's called angles. Angles. Oh, but they are given, so we don't need that. We don't need that at all. Uh, M we have coming in from the loaded data, so we do the phantom. Then we do the sinogram using angles. And here, note, we are committing inverse crime. So we do the, oh sorry, let's do this now with uh, our matrix A times this image dropped as a vector. So this should now be doing the same thing. Uh, let's remove this one. Uh, Okay, so uh, we have our M 
now done with the let's call this f this is f so now we are doing inverse crime we are simulating our measurement data using our our computational model and now we should use t uh, truncated singular value decomposition and actually let me steal our old code for that we did in deconvolution did we do it i think we i think we did did we yeah here reconstruction uh, we don't have noisy data we just have M mm. let's see we have this one but to place the S bells Previous file. Yes, let's take S files is diag of D and and here we should have uh, reshape F in the size MM. And here we should have reshape F0 to the size MM, I think. Ah, oh, let's see what happens. Ah! Okay. Why? Let's see the sizes. Okay, that's fine. Seems okay. This seems to have a wrong size. <coughs> ah, yes, because our matrix is no more... Uh, matrix A is not square in this case. So actually we need here, we need to transpose this one. Otherwise the sizes don't match. And here we have our truncated SVD reconstruction from 33 angles. And now, of course, we can use some more. Actually, let's take the... We have here the singular values. Let's take a look at the singular values. Okay, so let's put here F size. What was it? 32? Yeah. Sinogram. Oh, okay, yeah, so here should be, uh, let's just not have that. Okay, so now you see we are using uh, only very few of the first singular values. I think we can use some more. Maybe we could use 
Yes. You see, uh, if you see here, I think we would maybe go up to this first tick mark here. What is it? 200. Let's see what happens with 200. So now we are using uh, 200 of the first singular values and we get a reconstruction like that. So now we have uh, for tomography we have now built our model A times F, the matrix, matrix vector multiplication model. Uh, I hope not to have uh, dropped you too badly out of this because I know some of this just went on with coding but uh, anyway you will have a great chance to uh, get to know these matrices and objects yourself with the next exercises. Um, okay I think that's pretty much it for today so see you on Friday.